好，我们呃，我们接下来议程其实都有提供这个 slide 让大家去询问一些问题。如果你不好意思举手询问的话，可以在上面做提问。那当然我们也开放就是现场提问这样。那我们下午的第一场议程是 f l u x s o n g 那我们直接把时间交给讲者，谢谢。我已经帮你开好了。哦、oh, ，在在哪里？不好意思，开始。哎，嗯，是刚被关掉了。好，还是我等下过我手机这边用。哦、oh, ，OK， 好 ，OK。哎，今天这场是讲英文的。Um, so hi everyone. My name is Paul, and um, today I'm going to present to you the Plankathon. So Plankathon is a educational um, toy example about the Plank. So Plank is a uh, zk snark protocol to um, prove to you something, and then uh, the verifier can verify something. Okay. So it's about me, and my name is Paul, and I am working in pseudo research as a blockchain researcher intern. So um, today's uh, table of content is like, um, firstly, I will uh, um, tell you some prerequisite of how to understand the Planck, and then um, the high level overview of how the uh, ZK Snark protocol works. And then um, we'll like dive into the code and see what, what is the detail of this protocol. OK, so um, I think First reason is um, first thing is um, what what is the uh, zero knowledge proof and why zero knowledge proof? So the zero knowledge proof um, is um, kind of like the protocol that um, you can prove to um, someone a statement that without telling the um, verifier that um, like extra information, meaning that the verifier will only know the statement is true or false but nothing more. So um, in the blockchain, ZK can achieve two things, which is one, privacy, and then second is scaling. And in, in the ZK protocol, um, usually to implement that, um, you, will need to, um, you will need a compiler to compile the program into the constraint and, and, and then into the proof. So uh, the program is just like the prover have to like compute some things, and then based on the um, given program logic or the circuit logic, and then turn in the compiler will turn it, turn it into the constraint. It it's a uh, mathematical like equation, so uh, it's an intermediate representation of this compiler, and then um, the compiler backend will turn it into the proof. So just to generate the proof, and then the verifier get this proof and they can um, verify it. So like people talk about ZK snark, right? So what is ZK snark? ZK snark is actually an adjective that uh, like characterize what the proof should be. So um, if we say the proof is a ZK snark, that means that um, it, it has the several, several traits, just like uh, it has uh, zero knowledge, it, it is succinct, and it's non-interactive. So ZK star is a collective of the, of, of the proof system. It's not necessary to um, specify which protocol it use. And also, one prerequisite that we need to know is that in the protocol, we need something called commitment scheme. So we can simply take a Merkle tree as an example. So first, uh, the, the commitment scheme, like, uh, it will generally contain three steps. The like first step is the commit, and the second is open, and then third step is to verify. So if we uh, look into the Merkle tree, the first step is that we generate this tree. Like, there are many leaves. Then, then we gen generate the Merkle tree, we get the root node, we get a, a leaf node, and we get the path along the way. And also, the like, second step is uh, we want to open open this uh, Merkle tree, open a challenge. So um, to open a challenge, we might open at a specific leaf. And then the prover have to provide the uh, Merkle, like, Merkle path to the uh, root, uh, which is a Merkle proof. And the verifier get it. Uh, it will uh, verify if this um, like opening is true or false. So um, 
the Merkel tree is one kind of the commitment scheme. There are other commitment schemes, just like poly polynomial commitment scheme that we will see later. And I think the more important thing here is the reason why we have to have the commitment scheme is because I think first reason is prover um, usually in the protocol they have to prove in multiple wrong. So um, when they prove in like for example like first wrong and then the verifier will uh, need to verify in a later one then it will need a commitment scheme for the prover to commit first. And second is that um, with the commitment scheme, usually it's easy, easier for the verifier to verify the pre-computed value, right? So for example, in the Merkle tree, you can um, like save some commitment, uh, save some verification um, costs. You just need to do the um, OLOC and operation, right? Okay, so uh, moving on to the high level overview of Planck. So, uh, in a Planck, because it's a ZK protocol um, and it's universal, so we can um, like we can ask the prover to provide the proof to calculate like some some program. So um, let's take an example of an easy program, which is the x cube uh, times uh, x cubed plus x plus five equals thirty five. So um, in order to do the Planck protocol, we can actually express this um, equation into the in, in, into the circuit with a gate. Okay. So um, the circuit is actually right there. Um, this is a mu multiplication gate, meaning that the left input and right input uh, goes into goes into the, this gate, and then it will multiply. And this is um, at gate. So uh, why this represent SQ plus, uh, why this represent this equation? It's because uh, after this gate, uh, the output is X square, and after this gate is S cube uh, plus X plus phi equals 35. So um, actually this is how we're going to do, do uh, in a Planck. And so we need a compiler in the front end to compile the program into the constraint. And then with the constraint, we can um, um, generate the proof. So this is what the constraint should be. Um, so the constraint will be represented as the general form of every gate. So for example, uh, this gate, we, we, we want the general form to represent it. And also, we want this general form can apply to this. So to represent the app gate, um, we can represent it this way. So why this represent um, the app gate? This uh, general form, the Q part, like uh, the, pref the, the term prefix with um, Q is a selector, meaning if this uh, input is going to be selected uh, in this general form. So uh, L stands for left, right, output, and multiplication. So to represent an add gate, you need a left output, a left input, and then the right input, and then one output, right? And the output should be uh, minus one because it's an equation. You can throw it to another side. And then mod, mod gate is like um, simpler. It's because uh, we have the uh, multiplication selector already. Okay, so that's what we call the uh, constraint. So how to like further prove the constraint, uh, generate the proof based on this constraint. So in the Planck, um, what we want to do in a, in a sense of a high level is we want to make sure that the prover really compute and uh, really use this circuit to compute, right? Um, so that they, 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 don't, they don't fraud you, they don't like uh, cheat. Okay, so in order to check if they cor correctly uh, calculate this circuit, uh, we can check uh, two things. One thing is the gate constraint, and second thing is the copy constraint. So the gate constraint is that uh, whether this single gate is calculated uh, correct or not. And the second is uh, the copy constraint, uh, meaning that one gate output is actually uh, another gate's input, right? So in this case, uh, you can see this gate's output is uh, this gate's left, left input. So uh, it can check uh, by switching like permuting um, these two, um, these two value, because if they are like 
if they have the same value, then after the permutation, the value and the result should, shouldn't, shouldn't change, right? So in a real Planck protocol, it will like um, kind of accumulate all the gates. So uh, what they do is to um, use the value of this gate to multiply another gate to multiply another gate, and then um, it can accumulate all the value and then check it at once. So uh, moving to the code part. So we just talked about that we need a compiler to compile the program and then um, make it provable. So uh, what the Plunkathon do is uh, it has the like program and then uh, you can fit in some value and fit in some um, count, fit in, fit in, fit in some program. Just like uh, here, we fit in the a uh, multiply b uh, equals uh, c, and it should be constrained. So we kind of um, input this string into the program and then instantiate the whole program uh, and also its assembly. So low level, it will uh, compile to the assembly and then represent it this way, just like the gate wire and then uh, with the coefficient. So if you look into the uh, more detail about the compi compiler, we can see the um, program. Uh, there will be like the um, common preprocessors input. So uh, it's actually generated um, based on the circuit. So second thing is that um, we can see the make, uh, make gate polynomial and make s polynomial. So make gate polynomial is um, because there are like for several gates, right? And then for several gates, uh, they all share the uh, same trait, which is they have the uh, left input and right input. And then for every left input, um, for example, if this um, has the certain input and if this has a certain input, then actually we can use the polynomial to interpolate all these um, input. So uh, kind of use the polynomial to represent the uh, gate um, wiring. And then for the S polynomial, is exactly serve the purpose that I just mentioned is um, to permute to to make sure um, the make S polynomial is to generate the permutation polynomial so that we can use a gate polynomial to kind of make sure if it's consistent with the S polynomial. And then second thing um, in a detail here is we need something called setup and a KCG commitment and. Like the prerequisite to understand this is to uh, understand the elliptic curve. So elliptic curve is um, uh, like a, a finite group that uh, you can do some operation like this. So uh, for example, you can use A to plus B and then you get C, right? So that's how the elliptic curve works. And in the Planck, we specifically do um, some po um, commitment scheme, which is the KCG polynomial commitment scheme. So I wouldn't go into the detail right right here in this presentation, but I think you can apply the same logic as I mentioned in the commitment scheme, which is first one, we need a, we need a prover to commit the value, and then um, based on a specific um, like criteria that we want to verify, um, the prover can provide some proof. And then um, before that, the verifier can open the challenge for the p for the prover to prove that. Okay. So if you don't understand that, like it's totally okay, you can treat it as a black box. And in Plunkathon, uh, there's definitely the setup. The setup is is um, if you, if someone from familiar is um, kind of set up a lot of the um, like point on the elliptic curve, and it's, a, a, it's something called um, ceremony. So that's what the Ethereum community recently doing. So after this ceremony, it will generate a PTAL file, and then PTAL file is actually a huge chunk of the bytecode, and then um, like the prover can um, preprocess this PTAL file and then make it into a, a list of the G1 point. And then with this setup, and prover will be able to commit the, uh, this point into the polynomial in a later on. 
Okay, so moving into the proving run. So proving run in a Plunk protocol, uh, it, has, it has five runs. So um, in five different runs, it serves a different purpose. And like before we really dive into the um, like proving run, we can um, take a look at this transcript. So what is a transcript? Transcript is actually a cryptography uh, object that for a prover to um, input some value into that, and then you can squeeze out some uh, random challenge. And then based on this challenge, the prover can um, further prove something. And because uh, this challenge, they can make sure that uh, the verifier can do less work, and then the uh, proof is still valid. So it's kind of a reason why we can uh, make the interactive protocol into a non-interactive. It's, it's actually through this uh, Fiat-Shami heur heuristic. It's actually these, these techniques. So moving to first round. So the first round is uh, we want to encode the input, just like uh, I mentioned in the high-level overview. right? So uh, in the first round, um, this, um, this is what we care, the red block. And the W is the input. And then LI is the uh, Lagrange basis. So we will kind of uh, use a Lagrange interpolation to interpolate the input. So I think most of you are familiar with the Lagrange representation because we learned it in high school. So uh, this is like that. And then uh, this will be the input. And then this part. Um, this uh, fraction part will be the Lagrange basis. So this exactly match there. And then uh, in the Planck, we do use a lot of the um, um, like conversion between the Lagrange basis and the mon monomial basis. The monomial basis is actually the uh, coefficient form, um, which is just like a ax squared plus bx plus c. This is what we call the uh, coefficient form. And then with the techniques of the uh, like fast Fourier transform, we can turn the um, Lagrange basis to the monomial basis. And we can also use the inverse FFT to do the trick. So it can kind of like uh, converse each other. And the second thing uh, here in the round one is um, the uh, ZH here is 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 for uh, zero knowledge, and it's not implemented here in the Planckathon. So uh, I think it's just for the simplicity, so they don't um, implement it. And then after this calculation, we will get the polynomial, right? And then for this polynomial, and with the setup, we can commit this setup into the polynomial. Okay, so that's uh, what this step is doing, and then we output that. And second one is the accumulator. Accumulator is um, is what this part is doing. So the ZH is, just I just mentioned, is for zero knowledge. And uh, the real accumulator part is this. So what is this doing? So this is actually for the upper block which is the denominator, is the original input. And the lower block, which is the denominator, it's for the permuted part. So it kind of encode the permute and the permutation and the original into one uh, fraction. And then the later on, we will we'll use it. And then one thing to note here is that uh, if you like really look into what the um, like terms in the parenthesis is doing is um, you may notice some similar terms, which is a W and the omega. And no, like the W is the input, and the uh, omega is the root of the unity. And the root of unity here in the Planck uh, Planck paper is you index a uh, in index the input. Okay, so let's go to move, like round three. So in round three, it's uh, kind of utilize the uh, result that we get from uh, round two, the accumulator, and then um, kind of 
improve the gate constraint and the copy constraint, like I mentioned. So for the round three, we can separate into three parts. The first part is the gate constraint, it's for gate constraint. And then second part is for copy constraint. And the third part is checking the ba base case because accumulator in the in a code uh, that I will show you later, uh, it's calculated recursively. And um, so for the recursion, you may need to check the base case to ensure that the whole logic is consistent. So for the first part, uh, you may notice it's quite similar, like the general form. So it's checking the gate constraint, whether a specific gate is correctly, is correctly calculated. And the second thing is, um, we have two lines here. And then one thing behind uh, these uh, formula is uh, these two lines should cancel each other. So one is plus and the other is minus. So um, if you look into that, you can see the form, like they, they share many like same, same terms, right? So this one is for uh, permutation and this one is for original. So these should uh, these two term, uh, these two lines should cancel each other. And the third one is for base case. And then another thing that we we need to know is um, here in the paper it separates the TX, uh, which is the quotient polynomial, into three parts. That is because that we don't have enough exponent of the setup, so that we we have to separate them into the uh, smaller smaller chunk, and then we can reuse this uh, setup. Okay, so it kind of have a lot of the detail in the proving round three, so uh, I'll skip some of them. So in a round four, it's actually um, to optimize the proof. So if you don't optimize it, then it's uh, the, the work is almost done in a round three because we have the TX, check the uh, gate constraint and then the copy constraint uh, at a moment. So um, the round four is for to, to, prepare the, to prepare the optimization. So the optimization, uh, the, the Planck author want to apply here is called the linearization. So um, we can also look at the red block here. So the red block here is for example, if, if, if the verifier want to check this identity, check um, h1x um, times h2x uh, minus h3x. Actually, the prover had to like send uh, three commitment to the verifier, right? And it's really costly. It's, it, it, it's really overload. And um, actually, we can use the trick of the linearization to kind of reduce the um, reduce this, this load, we can uh, save uh, less term. So the trick here is to kind of calculate the H1 here. And then the, the formula will become C um, multiply H2 minus H3. And then because they are all the KZG commitment, then the KCG commitment have the nature which is the homomorphic. So uh, meaning that if, if it's linear, then the uh, commitment can add to like linear added to another commitment and then it can make it like uh, proof by batch. So this is what the uh, optimization here is doing. Okay, so Round five here is actually to uh, linearize the TX to RX. So if you remember that the TX here is the quotient polynomial, checking the gate constraint and then the uh, copy constraint. So after we linearize the TX, some of the term will become the constant and then we can make it to the RX. So after, like with the Rx, we can make the uh, for the opening proof to combine other things, the rest of the things, and then uh, make it linear independent and make it a um, W zeta. And also like we'll check 
呃 W zeta 呃 omega。So after all these one, the 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 proof will be like this. So there are a lot of the element. So maybe in the in the implementation that the prover can combine them into the um, bytecode with some uh, with some header or with some uh, like flag for the verifier to know um, which part of the proof is uh, like which is is for which element, and then verifier will get it, and verifier will have to verify two things. One thing is the wx satisfy this condition. And the other thing is uh, w zeta omega x satisfy these things. So we can kind of simplify, simplify this to uh, this term, these two, ter these two equation, and then rearrange it. Also uh, combine these two um, equation to, uh, with this random challenge so that we can check it at once. This is uh, usual uh, techniques in the cryptography. So we combine them with a the random challenge and then we check it at once. At the end, you will check it with the elliptic curve pairing. Okay. So uh, there are several optimization here. So first one is to batch the to to batch uh, kind of aggregate the uh, KZG commitment. And then second thing is in a verification, they also um, separate the constant and the non-constant part. And then third thing is uh, uh, when do the batch it, uh, kind of have other techniques. One is the, uh, doing the first part, and then after tackling with the first part, we will um, batching uh, all the terms together, which which we call the full part. Okay, so we can take a look at this um, program. Uh, so it's the official repo of the Plunkathon. Uh, if anybody is interested, then uh, you can simply search the Plunkathon on like on Google, and then. Um, so you, you can write Plunkathon yourself. Uh, there are a lot of the blank and you can fill it in. So this is what I call the program. And the program will like instantiate the constraint, right? Just like I said. And for the proving, proving part, uh, we can see there are like um, five fronts. And also in each one, first one, uh, remember what we are doing is uh, to encode the um, input. So they will fit an input into the polynomial and make it in, make it um, a polynomial. And then in round two, it's kind of a accumulator, right? So the accumulator is to accumulate a va value. So um, this is what the accumulation is happening. It's a uh, recursive, um, it's a recursive um, loop. And then in round three, because we have to uh, kind of multiply uh, most of the input polynomial, so we need a bigger root of unity. So we kind of uh, make it into the four, uh, four times finest here. And then we will make the Tx after round three. So in round four, what we are doing is to linearize the polynomial. It's an optimization trick. So this is to prepare, uh, to calculate all these uh, linearized term. And in a round five, um, we're kind of aggregating uh, to turn the Tx into the Rx. So that's what round five is doing. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much for um, all of the material today. So um, before I end this uh, talk, I want to thank uh, Matthew, Hans, Steven, and Wacon. Uh, without your help, I cannot like um, make today's presentation. Yes, so uh, uh, thank you for you and thank you for the audience today. Oh, by the way, if if you want to like raise a question, it's okay to like uh, raise a question in both uh, Chinese and English. So uh, the question is: Can you help confirm again what exactly is the statement that we want to prove in a Plunkathon? Okay, so it depends on what kind of a program um, you want to uh, 
instantiate. You can, with the like different statement you want to prove, you can make different circuit. And then the Plunk compiler will compile these circuit into a like um, corresponding input polynomial. So it's up to you, like, um, like what kind of the proof you want to make. Okay, thank you.